Welcome to Lessons in Dyslexic Thinking, conversations with the world's most inspiring dyslexics, where we find out what dyslexic thinking is and how each of us can employ it to change the world. This podcast is sponsored by Microsoft, who, like us, are passionate about empowering dyslexic thinking. Check out their brilliant immersive reader, free across several Microsoft 365 apps, which helps dyslexic thinkers to fly by clicking the Microsoft link in the podcast notes. Today I'm joined by Britain's youngest TV chef and ambassador for Made by Dyslexia, Amari McQueen. Great to have you with us, Amari. Thank you for having me. Amari, by the time you were 12, you had already become CEO of your own company, Dipalicious. You'd opened your own pop-up restaurant. You created your own cookbook and your own TV cooking show. Now you have two successful TV shows, over 50,000 YouTube subscribers and a brand new family cookery book. Plus, you were named one of the top 25 entrepreneurs aged 25 and under incredible achievements. There really is no stopping you, is there? (laughs) You've said, my dyslexic thinking makes me imagine and create my vegan recipes and makes me passionate about teaching other people to cook. Passion and imagination are certainly two things that dyslexics are incredibly good at. Tell me, how do you think your dyslexic thinking helps you to do what you do? Well, in the kitchen, I'm a maker and an imaginer whilst creating new recipes and when I'm doing this challenge with my dad. So me and my dad, we do this little challenge where my dad will cook something that's non-vegan and I'll cook something that's vegan but with a twist to it, so I'm making my own recipe. And I use my imagination a lot in the kitchen. My kitchen is my science lab, as I call it. And when I was younger, um, as I found it hard with my reading, I found it hard reading the labels of seasonings and since some of the herbs that I had wasn't in packets I would smell them and know exactly what they are so I use my sense of smell in the kitchen a lot as well. That's amazing that's absolutely amazing I know a lot of famous um, chefs are dyslexic so you've got Jamie Oliver, um, Mark Murphy who's on Chopped in the USA, James Martin, Marco Pierre White, um, so many chefs so it makes sense if you're tapping into that incredible dyslexic thinking. When you come up with a recipe, do you normally think of coming up with something completely from scratch or do you take recipes and then give them a new twist and and make them vegan? What's your kind of process for coming up with things? Um, since we have since we have so many alternatives to different things as being a vegan, I've seen a lot of alternatives. I mostly I don't copy a recipe. It's mostly when my dad would do these challenges with me that's when I copy his recipe and put a twist to it to make it my own and make it vegan but then other than that I would have all different things in the kitchen and basically as science people do in the science lab they add everything together and see how it goes so that's what I do. Your cookery books have you got one cookery book or are there two cookery books? Two. Do you have favorite recipes from that? I would say my soya curry since it's a quick and easy recipe to make and it smells delicious um and what else barbecue jackfruit wrap sounds like there's so many to choose from yes there are (laughs) there are and do your family like your cooking yes yes they do and as i as i have a big family i'm always cooking big portions of meals so they're they're easy recipes to just cook up and share around the table and everyone enjoys it i bet i bet and Tell me a little bit about how you got into vegan cookery. How how did that whole thing happen? It was when I was researching about like how to get my mum back on her feet because she had hemiplegic migraines where she has these little fits and um, she finds it hard with her walking and talking. Um, and I found about I found out about veganism when I was researching how to get her back on her feet, and I didn't like the way animals were treated for food and clothes, so I decided to bring people together through food without harming animals and be vegan. The vegan movement is huge. It's, it's, it seems to be absolutely everywhere. Why do you think that is? It's because it's the 
I believe veganism is the best way of living. Um, you do get the right amount of vitamins and it's about what you add together to get the vitamins. And um, it's better for the environment and you're not harming animals. You're so passionate about it, aren't you? Yes. And and you're also very passionate about teaching other people to cook. Yes. I why am. why do you think that is and what are you trying to achieve with that? It's because I want to spread the word about veganism and teach young children how to go in the kitchen and leash their culinary creativity in the kitchen since at a young age I've always wanted to cook and my dad showed me basically how fun it was to be in the kitchen and cook and you could do anything with food and your youtube channel um is incredible it's just very quick and easy way of yes. teaching people to cook isn't it yes and you have huge amount of fans on youtube as well don't yes. you <laughs> just touching on school as we've talked about all the things you're absolutely amazing at um when did you find out you were dyslexic and how did that impact you it was when i was in primary school and my teachers basically told my mom that i won't be able to do my sets because i'm not smart enough and my mom basically since it wasn't a surprise to my family since i had dyslexia um my mom also had it my mom's mom had it and my brother laquan does so um, it wasn't really a surprise when my mum found out that I had dyslexia. Um, I At first, I thought I had a disability, but it wasn't. It's a learning difficulty, and that's what my mum told me, and you guys as well. And from then, I've been using my dyslexia as a superpower. And how is school now? Because you're, you're doing online schooling yes. now, aren't you? Yes, online schooling is going well. Um, they're very helpful. They have these teachers, they have one-on-one -on -one lessons with you. So no one else in the class would know how far behind you are or anything like that, or what results you got on your test. So that's amazing. Um, and the school's called Kings into High. It's an amazing online school. And all of the lessons are recorded, so that helps me even more. So if I don't understand the work that I've been given, I could go back and watch the recording. That sounds like it's an awful lot easier than regular school yes. for you yeah and are you about to do your GCSEs is that this yes. year yes yes how's that year. going it's going well it's going well I've done my mocks so yeah <laughs> and I think I'm right in saying that you are really keen to do a sort of a cookery course for yes. kids an exam in in cookery that actually is about cookery tell me about yes. that because that sounds like a so great idea since with my online school, they don't do the um, culinary classes. I want to basically have these culinary classes that kids can go to and basically release their culinary creativity in the kitchen and also have fun whilst doing it. Um, and yeah, I just want to show them that the kitchen is a happy place to be. And what do you think needs to happen in education? Because not everybody can go to online school and a lot of kids are sitting in schools and really struggling. What do you do you have any ideas of what should what you think should happen to make it better for dyslexic kids? They should have more people that understand the meaning of dyslexia so they're not put down in a way. As me when I was in primary school I was told that I'm not smart enough to do my sets. They need more teachers that would that know about dyslexia and wants to help them and bring them up. So they're able to do their sets and take part in other things that other kids are doing. And what do you think kids can do? I mean, obviously understanding their strengths and telling people about their strengths, but what do you think dyslexic kids can do to really try and help themselves in school? Um, mostly, I would say open up about it and tell people you have dyslexia and basically explain to them what it is instead of just sitting down trying to read a book but also struggling since that's what I, I used to do I find it hard with my reading writing and spelling and I never told anyone I had dyslexia at the time because I never knew but when I was in secondary school I still didn't tell anybody I had dyslexia yeah it's really important isn't it to be not to be embarrassed by it but yeah. to talk about it and explain your strengths and explain your challenges because yes. then people can help you with your challenges yes. but you can also lean into your strengths as well yeah and your mum and your dad, um, your whole family play a very, really, really big part in encouraging you. But I know your your mum and dad really focused on helping you to mm -hmm. discover your strengths. Yeah. How important was that? It helped boost my energy a lot more. Like I'm much more confident than what I was. Um, and 
knowing that I have supportive people by my side is amazing. Yeah, you've got an amazing powerhouse of a, a <laughs> mum and dad, haven't you? It's, it's fantastic. And how important do you think it is for other parents to really encourage their kids and really focus on what they're good at? It's really important since some kids, they don't, their parents don't really pay that much attention to what they want to do. Like if a kid is really good at sports, um, some parents might not know that, but then if you focus more on it, you'll see it and they might become someone big in the future. Um, even with kids that like art or want to become an author, it's very important to keep an eye on that and keep them going and basically give them good advice and basically tell them that they're doing an amazing job and they should carry on. Um, and tell them when they're wrong and from when they're right because some kids, they like to hear things like, you're doing an amazing job and all of that. But then some kids, they want to hear the truth. So then you should also tell your kids the truth as well. Constructive criticism. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. And talking about criticisms and mistakes, I would imagine in cookery making mistakes is actually quite a good thing because sometimes brilliant yes. things can come from yes. it. Tell me a time where you made a mistake and either learnt from it or something good came from it. When I was younger, when I made pasta, I burnt it. It was actually black. I don't know how that happened, but it was burnt. And I learnt that with the pasta, you had to take your time and keep mixing it. I wasn't as patient as what I am when I was younger. I, wasn't, I just wanted to get it done. But then, as I learned in the kitchen, you have to be patient and wait. Yeah, that's good advice across the board, isn't it? <laughs> and are you? what's the biggest challenge you're facing now? Is there something you're really trying to achieve or get through? Um, well, I really want to get my dips into stores um, so more people can have them. And I want to get kids' ready meals into stores as well so kids can enjoy their um, ready meals. And I want to um, bring um, vegan meals into schools so kids have healthy lunches to eat at school instead of eating junk food when they're at school, so yeah. And so where are you with those things? I mean, there's three amazing goals. What what do you need? What's your, what's your next step? Well, at the moment, I'm going to schools and doing these cookery classes so kids can get the the kind of idea of what's going on and I want to change their meals. So I'm in the process of doing that at the moment. Um, with the stores, um, I'm still figuring out how to get my dips into stores and my ready meals, but I'm working on something special and that's going to be in store soon. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. And did, have you got angel investors and things behind you now? I know that you were looking for investors at some point. I have an investor um, and that's something that's coming in stores now. So yeah, um, my mum is in the process of speaking to him. Um, he's helped us with the packaging and stuff. So it's on the way to stores. And yeah, um, I just need uh, an investor for my dips and ready meals. So when will we see it in stores? Can you tell us what it's called, or is that all still top secret? Yeah, top secret. <laughs> oh, we'll have to. We'll we'll keep a keep a look out for it. Yes. So Amari, you've said that you find learning to read or reading tricky, mm -hmm. um, but your YouTube videos, um, your TV shows, when you're cooking and you're showing people how to cook, you're an amazing storyteller and performer and teacher whilst you're also cooking at the same time. Is that, do you find that easy? Because I'd find that so difficult. It's easy because I know what I'm doing. It's because I basically read through what I'm going to do. So first of all, if I'm creating a recipe, I would basically write it down on a piece of paper and read through it so then I know exactly what I'm doing. So then any mess-ups that happen on the camera, I can just go back and repeat it again. If anything was to mess up, it will mostly be the words that come out of my mouth, like if I <laughs> say the wrong measurements of what's supposed to go in there, which I'm supposed to say the right measurements, so I have to retake sometimes. Most of the time when I have to retake videos is mostly when I'm doing my food for thought, which I recently started doing. Um, and yeah, it's mostly the non-cookery videos that I mostly mess up on, so 
What is food for thought? I basically show people what non-vegan food actually has in it or what it really contains. It's basically a way of convincing people to become vegan. So a question that I ask all of my guests is, um, what do you think that your seven-year-old self would think about what you're doing now? I would say... Mm. Well, I started cooking at seven, so... And I found out about me being dyslexic at seven. Do you think he'd be proud? Yeah, I think he would be proud. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I don't really know. Um, I know he'll be proud. Um, he'll be proud of my parents as well. Amazing. So what is your biggest boldest scariest dream um it's mostly to as i know that gordon ramsay he goes to restaurants and he doesn't really give them good reviews i i really want a restaurant and i want gordon ramsay to come to my restaurant and basically enjoy my food but ooh. give you a really good review yeah you met gordon didn't you you yeah, were on his show yeah. with him yeah he liked my food but he hasn't tasted all of my recipes. So when do you think, um, when's your goal for opening your restaurant? Because um, did you want to open a restaurant on a bus, I think, at one point? Yes, yes. I still want to do that, but I'm keeping that on hold for a little bit. Um, I, I wanted a bus restaurant so me and my dad could drive around the world since my dad's an amazing bus driver and people could eat on my bus and enjoy my food whilst exploring London or anywhere else, um, and yeah. But I would like a chain of restaurants, just like Gordon Ramsay. So there really is no stopping you, is there? You've got no. so many dreams <laughs> and ambitions. I love it, I love it. So if you had one piece of advice for other dyslexics, maybe dyslexics around your age or yeah. young people just deciding what to do, what would, you can have more than one piece, but what would that advice be? What do you think the most important thing is that they can should know or learn? I would say no matter how hard it gets, keep trying. No matter how hard it hurts, keep trying. But remember one thing that um, if negative comments are showing you away, just ignore it. That's incredible, incredible advice. So when you get negative comments coming your way, what do you do to ignore them? How do you stop it from actually affecting you? I know that I have a superpower in me, so, so I mostly just ignore it. And I've been learning how to read by um, reading cookbooks. Uh, that has improved my reading a lot more. Fantastic. And and if you if you wanted to give parents advice, because I know mm. your parents have had such a big impact yeah. um, on your life, what would you advise any parents of dyslexic kids to do? I would say help them more. Like show them that you really care. And you know they have um, dyslexia and it's okay to have dyslexia. Basically show them that what they have is a superpower. Push them a lot more so they become much more confident. Like even with their reading and writing, if they find that difficult, give them what my dad does. If I find it hard with my reading, he'll give me like this book so I could basically write everything that I see on the book, but on a piece of paper, so it improves my writing. Um, and I would read cookbooks, so you could give them something that, if they love music, you could make them listen to music, but with the lyrics playing, so then they could basically improve their reading. Basically help them in a way that they find it comfortable with learning, so yeah. And how important do you think it is for parents to build confidence through strengths? Because obviously that's very much what your family have done for you. It's very important because you can see their real true colour and what they're good at. And it's it's just very important because my parents did it for me and now I'm a, a confident dyslexic person and I'm achieving a lot of things. So, yeah. You certainly are, Amara. You're achieving masses. Um, well, we're really, really proud to have you as our ambassador. Thank and you. thank you so much. That was really, really interesting lessons in dyslexic thinking. Thank you for having me. If you'd like to find out more about what dyslexic thinking skills are and how to recognise them in schools, at work or at home, you can take our free training now. 
empowering dyslexic thinking in schools, available on Microsoft Learn, and empowering dyslexic thinking at work, available on LinkedIn Learning. And please subscribe so you don't miss out on future lessons in dyslexic thinking.